my marvellous guardians. Ooh, Bungie have been sneaky today. They've released a massive state of the game, well, letter, I suppose you could call it, and it covers so many huge changes that are coming to Destiny 2, I couldn't quite believe my eyes. And they've done a canny thing, really, because they've done it when the Outriders demo is out, and Outriders will be starting to flex its muscles and maybe invading some of Destiny 2's turf, and poor old Anthem has been announced as being well, having its throat cut, really, so that's gone as well. So I wanted to dive into some of the more interesting things that have popped up in the state of the game by Joe Blackburn, who is basically the new director of Destiny 2. So they got the bombshell out of the way first. We're not having any major expansions this year. Nothing in 2021. The Witch Queen is going to be pushed back to the early part of 2022. They didn't tell us what that date would be or what month it would be. We just know there's no major expansion this year. Now, the way they've placed that is that, of course, because of the pandemic and also because it's such a big expansion that they desperately want to get right, they've decided to give themselves a bit of breathing space to push it back. When I first read it, I thought, oh no, oh no, no. But then the more I think about it, you know, I'd rather have a good expansion. This is my philosophy. I'd rather have a good expansion that blows our socks clean off than something that isn't quite right and leaves people grumbling again like we kind of had with Beyond Light, even though I thoroughly enjoyed it. The mood has been, well, not very good recently. So on the front of it, this looks like bad news, but it's not, it's good news. He's also said something incredibly interesting. Listen to this. As we began to scale production on the Witch Queen last year, we made the difficult but important decision to move its release to early 22, which is what I just said, but we also realised we needed to add an additional unannounced chapter, chapter, chapter after Lightfall to fully complete our first saga of destiny, the saga of light and dark. So we've got another chapter coming after Lightfall to finish it all off. And the other interesting phrase in that is fully complete our first saga. So we're going to get another iteration of destiny and another saga. Are they going to do the Star Wars thing and set it in a completely another time? You know, in the past, in the future, loads of possibilities, but good grief. What massive news. Okay, here's the headline news. Sunsetting is dead. It's gone as of right now. That is going to be a massive relief to lots of people, well, including me, really, actually, because let's face it, there was nothing worse than having a best before date on your favourite weapon. I've been looking at my falling guillotine going, oh, bollocks, I don't want to upgrade this anymore because I'm just chucking away resources. But they've addressed it. And what they've said is, we've made the decision that any weapon or armor that can currently be infused to max power will continue to be able to reach max power permanently. Not at the end of the year, permanently. So starting in Season 14, we won't be capping the infusion on any weapons or armor that have not already reached the cap as the start of Season 13. So this means you'll be able to take your trusty, your falling guillotine, hooray, and all the high start armor you've worn this year and take it on the raid in the Witch Queen. So from my understanding, anything earned after the Season of Dawn will be permanently infusible up to the maximum power level. I think that's great news because it's caused so much bother in the community and so much annoyance and people leaving the game because of it. So they've made a decision. It's a brave one. They haven't gone back on their, well, they have gone back on their word, I suppose, but you know, You've got to admit your mistakes, haven't you? And they have, and that's great, and that's good for all of us. So counter to that, they've also said, because we won't be capping any more of our weapons, we must consider more variables in the game's balance of our upcoming seasons and releases. So expect to see tuning when it comes to our biggest outliers in PvP and PvE. So that, and then he says, yes, I'm looking at you, Fell Winters and War Mind Cells. Well, that's fair enough. Individual tweaking, I think, has always been the best way to go, to be perfectly honest. Right, next thing that they've talked about and this is something that's been on people's minds and I've been reading a lot of people talking about it is just the general increasing the number making the number get bigger and people aren't enjoying the chase anymore of course I'm talking about your power cap your power level because they say last year we started a paradigm nice words where we raised the overall power cap by 50 each season now while this helped ensure that infusion caps shifted the meta it also made each season feel like a significant reset to the power 
power you had accumulated. That is very true, because when the new season starts, you go, oh, hang on a minute, I'm like Pee Wee Herman, which was a bit rubbish. So, what they're going to do, starting in season 14, they're going to be raising the power cap by only 10. And it says that's for each non-expansion season. So it looks like a major expansion will get a bigger power boost. But each season is only going to go up 10, not 50. So this means if you reach the maximum power in season 13, when next season rolls around, you will be directly in the 10-point pinnacle band of the power pursuit. And this power increase should feel familiar to anyone who's played Season of Dawn last year. And we're excited to see how this progression feels alongside our new systems. That's pretty good because it's stopping that really annoying buffer chase that we all had to get our level up before we could go and do the more interesting activities. So I think that's good too, really. We'll see how it works out. But yeah, I want to quickly address some of the PvP changes that they're going to be bringing too because people have been feeling that PvP has been completely neglected for a long time. And indeed it has. It is rather thin on the ground. So they're saying first in season 15 we'll be addressing the three peaking in trials and competitive. That means whipping out a third person like a sword or doing an emo to get an unfair advantage by seeing around corners and stuff like that and telling your teammates where people are. Now in these modes emotes will be disabled and players will be unable to pull out any third person weapon that doesn't have ammo. So if you've got no sword ammo, you can't whip it out and threaten people with it. Sounds like an effective way to deal with it, if you ask me, but I don't really play trial, so there we go. However, uh, as far as stasis is concerned in PvP, because that's been a massive bugbear for people, they've listed some changes that they're going to be making this season and next, although they haven't specified when these changes are going to happen. So for the Behemoth Titan, they're going to decrease the super damage reduction. They're going to increase super energy cost when performing light attacks. They're going to remove freeze area of effect on supercast. So they're going to remove that, okay. And reduce travelling e efficacy of shiver strike when slowed. Can someone explain that to me in English in the comments, please? Revenant Hunter. Decrease withering blade damage and tracking. Decrease slow stacks applied to targets and remove shatter drive damage reduction. And for the Shadebinder, who's the Warlock, fixed bug where ice flare boats won't track towards targets immediately on creation. And the fixed bugs where Shadebinder super projectiles were not tracking until a certain distance travelled. And they're going to also generally decrease crystal shatter damage. That is going to make some way of a difference, although I still think people want to have PvP modes where there's no stasis at all. I don't know whether they can do that. I suppose they could lock it out, I suppose. But there we go. That sounds all for the better. Now, they're also going to be making changes to Trials of Osiris because a lot of people have been moaning about the fact that the rewards aren't really up to much and it's generally very, a very unrewarding activity. So they're going to be looking at completely changing that around and uh, they want to make it more incentivized by making a 3-5 to five win a more achievable goal for more players. But this is what interested me. Investigate opportunities for solo players to participate in, reg in Trials regularly. We believe this will not only make the matchmaking pools healthier but will also encourage more players to see what trials is all about and then hopefully form social connections with other pvp loving guardians that's a great idea because it'll give people an incentive to go and play it and if they like it form a fire team and go and kick some bottom and then something even more interesting and this is long overdue we will be targeting a similar in scope refresh to iron banana so iron banana is going to have a change too all excellent news. Right, moving on to new raid information. Well, new old raid information. The Vault of Glass is coming back in Season 14. Now, they've said their philosophy behind bringing things out of the Content Vault is to keep them feeling like the content you remember while updating them to meet Destiny 2's difficult raid standards. So while the high-level experience remains the same, you should expect the raid team to have a few tricks up their sleeves when you tackle the depths of Venus this summer. More Season 14 news, and indeed going forward, a Ada 1 is going to be returning to the tower and she's basically going to be our vendor for transmog. Transmog means the new armor system. So what you'll be able to do is take any armor that you have in your collection and turn it into a universe.
universal ornament and they're going to be calling that armor synthesis so it looks like there's going to be unique materials and resources that we need to do this and they've said every season ada will offer players a set of bounties that highlight various activity types right so you can be playing gambit strikes la 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 to get these particular materials that you can use then to power up ada's loom Ooh, new bit of kit and they can turn any piece of armor in your collection into a permanent universal ornament but it says players short on time but long on cash can buy silver and buy these synthesis tokens to do the upgrading to well that's pretty cool now in order to apply those ornaments we've got a new character screen where we can stick our doodars on but this is really interesting listen to this you'll also find that you can apply shaders here individually or on all pieces of your equipped gear with one click and to make it even easier to try out a bunch of new looks in season 14 we've also changed shaders to be permanent unlocks meaning you no longer will need to hold on to stacks of shaders into your inventory yay that's great that's been doing my head for so long i spent so many bloody hours shifting around little squares with four triangular colors in them it's driven me around the bed thank god for that that's fantastic news no more bloody shader stacks thank christ Sorry, I'm relieved about that, as you might tell. And as a quick finish off, he had a few quick fire pieces of information, which are actually massive. And this one is cross play is coming to the masses in season 15. We're getting we're getting <laughs> we're getting cross play, baby. We'll be doing some internal rollouts and all that malarkey, but with cross play, you'll be able to play with all your friends, no matter what platform you call home. And don't worry, we won't be matching console and PC players together in the Crucible. A lot of people were worried about that. PC players can specifically invite their console friends to play with them in their PC Crucible pools. Just don't drown. They've also had a bit of Ikora Ray news that she hasn't been used at all, but she'll be seeing a lot more of Ikora in season 14 and she'll also be playing a pivotal role in the Witch Queen. Another thing they've told us is that in season 15, so not next season, the season after that, they're going to be introducing their first round of legendary stasis energy and power weapons. Hurrah! We're finally going to be getting stasis weapons. That's great, and there'll be a lot more information on that as we go into autumn. And then as a little treat, he's given us a little preview of armor sets for the witch queen themselves have a little look at these babies i thought the hunter then for a moment had a massive space helmet on but it's a hood i do like it it's very nice i like the designs i like the little logo-y things and the insignias you can see there's bray tech stuff there too look on the breastplates i don't know what the hell that symbol is on the front of the warlock there it looks almost like a cthulhu starfish thing that's going to be something to do with the witch queen of course well anyway oh look the hunter's got a little old mobile phone from the 80s isn't that marvelous and the warlock is taking his own bog roll with him just in case he poos himself in a another scary ship sorry for the length of the video there folks but my god that was a lot of information to get out to you and i wanted to do it sharpish now if you want to see more of my larks you can drop me a subscribe and a like and leave a comment as well letting me know what you think about all these massive changes that are coming and which ones are the most exciting for you and if you want to drop me a coffee i've got a buy me a coffee page where you can slip me a couple of quid so i can go and buy some gruel to eat in my hovel thank you so much for watching and i shall see you all again very soon sausage oot